Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Thursday, May 20, 2021. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Interestingly enough, when we assess and look at the daily chart, it becomes clear as mud. And I say that tongue in cheek, it actually is pretty clear what should happen over the next several days. We have some if then statements, so it's pretty clear, it's pretty easy to read from this point forward. Let's make the assessment on the daily chart. What's jumping off the page? Well, A number one is they went right up to and still are stuck at the 20 period moving average. So that being the case, we can go like this. We're gonna be the umpire calling balls and strikes. We're gonna do both sides, but let me give you this scenario first. So technically speaking, here's a move down, and here is a bearish, wedgish, flaggish kind of thing. Now it's not the cleanest thing in the neighborhood. However, it is what it is. All they've been doing is going back and forth between the lows and the 20 period moving average. Get above the 20 period moving average on a daily closing basis, and they'll go higher. Get below the lows over here, and it's good night, Irene. What's up above? What's the incentive to go higher other than the trend is your friend? Is there a destination? Is there a target that we can identify? And the answer is, yes, there is. What is it? Well, it's the gap that we've been discussing for the last several days. They missed it. They traded away. Well, guess what? Remember what we said, whether or not we said it here, inside the numbers, or a combination of both, it doesn't really matter. But what we said was, when they miss a gap, it's one of two things. Either it's weakness, and they're really going to fall away in earnest, or they're going to come back, and they're going to go higher later. So that entails the recocking of the weapon type of thing. So what we have is they missed the gap, they went lower to retest the lows, they made a higher low, that's a successful test. That's bullish on its face until the lows are broken. So if they get above the 20 period moving average, just filling the gap is probably not all that's in the cards. They'll probably go higher. However, the destination that we can identify is the gap. Call it 418 for argument's sake. Now let's take it a step further. They're up at the gap, they're filling the gap, and let's just do a hypothetical. They're doing it on Friday. Let's say they're doing it Friday morning. Now enter the Friday float. So can the Friday float bring us above the gap to another spot? And of course the answer is yes. What's that spot? Well, how about the next big fat round number, or at least in the vicinity of 420. Now, let's further the hypothetical. Let's extrapolate into next week. What's going on next week? Well, nothing in particular other than we're on the verge of another three-day holiday weekend with Memorial Day holiday coming up. That's interesting. Why is it interesting? What relevance does that have for now? And the relevance it has is, if in fact they finish this week bullish, go with me on this, write this stuff down. If they finish bullish, let's say they finish above the gap, above 418. We'll use that as a line in the sand. It's a line in the sand for this particular bullish hypothetical scenario. So they finish the week above the gap, 418 or higher, maybe even 420 or higher. What's the likelihood from that point forward? Enter the weekly chart. So you see what's going on. They'll finish the week around the all-time highs. Maybe they finish at an all-time high. They don't have to. Let's just say they finish close enough, a stone's throw away from the all-time highs. What happens next week? Well, one scenario is they jam them up into the three-day holiday weekend at new highs, the melt-up continues, therein lies potentially the blow-off scenario. We'll call that scenario 1.0. Since we are the person in blue, we are the umpire calling balls and strikes, what's the other side of that? What's scenario 2.0? Let's say they do fill the gap or they don't fill the gap. In this scenario, either is plausible. 
but they close below the gap. They close the day below the gap, and in this scenario, 2.0, they close still below the 20 period moving average. Well, then what do we have? Then we still have this scenario, and the jury would still be out. Maybe they go higher next week, maybe they don't, but that's a different scenario than from where they close Friday above the gap. Because in 2.0, until and unless they're above all this stuff, above the 20 period moving average, then really this is in play. So here's the way we'll leave it Thursday night before it happens on Friday and whatever it is. Finishing above the gap is bullish on its face. Finishing below the gap keeps you wondering, scratching your head. What else, if anything, is jumping off the page on the daily chart? Well, how about this one? So what happened today if we just want to kiss it? We just want to keep it simple, stupid. They ran up to test the high of the last breakdown candle, which was from the 18th two days ago. The high was 416.06. What's the high today? 416.63. They spike it. They close below. That's garden variety. On the first hit, especially when they come from afar like they did today. Today was a big up day in the market from low to high. So on the first run, it's very unlikely that they just whistle past the graveyard. It's unlikely that they close above on the first run. You're not going to find that in any books anywhere. That's just the way the market works. That's trade school 101. Let's see what we have inside the numbers. I think you'll find some stuff interesting. We'll circle back to stocks on the move in a few moments. Now, this is at zero dark 30, and recall, the futures were down overnight. Down doesn't always mean bearish. Down may mean something else. Just pay attention to what you find in here. Happy Thursday. Even with the late day jam session yesterday, we're still waking up to some red follow through. Okay, but that doesn't mean anything. That's just the first thing that I saw when I was still rubbing my eyes. Was there any surprise? Of course not. Why? Because I was up at 4 o'clock in the morning double-checking what was going on. Do I want to be up at 4 o'clock in the morning? Absolutely not. Do I have a choice? No, apparently not. We're taking the market at face value until she gives us reason to do something different. They're retracing a portion of the reversal from yesterday. SPY has a nice, juicy, reversal-looking candle. The futures, the ES chart, has a standard garden-variety tail candle. Now, think about this for a moment. Think about where the market was early in the day. Think about where they finished the day. Think about what was posted here at zero dark 30. The early look is that they're retracing a portion of those candles. Unless we saw a price below yesterday's low, this is a bullish development. Now let's get the visual. Here's the SPY chart. This is yesterday's candle. They start out low. They finish at the highs. We talked about that. That's bullish on its face, period. Here's the ES chart. It's a different look. They had a tail candle yesterday. And today, what did they do? And this was going on overnight and this morning. They retraced a portion of the tail candle. Can you find out more information about that kind of stuff? Where would you? How about the course at Lazy E-Mini Trader? Now, again, think about where they were early in the morning. They were a lot lower than they finished the day. From a pure numbers perspective, staying above and opening the day above 410, the fat round number, keeps the door open for the same 412 area we were talking about late yesterday. Opening below does something different. That doesn't matter. They went in the northern direction. We're moving along. Let's see what else we have. How about the 9 o'clock update? As the morning grew on, the futures got stronger and stronger. Think, retrace the tail candle. Funny how that works. They're headed for 412. Opening the day above opens the door for more. How much more? Now, we're not sure they can or will get there, but the technicals say 413.10, then 414.30, give or take. Now, let's get the visual of what we're talking about. 412 is the lower line. That was a target from yesterday. They didn't get there. They opened the day, and here's the opening print. Opening print, 411.79.
they blow right through 412 to 413.10. They thought about it for a while, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 minutes. That's eating time off the clock. They begin to grind higher, right to the next target, only they begin a melt-up operation to where? 416. What was 416? Exactly 416.06 was the daily chart breakdown candle high. Now, who knew they were going to have a melt-up operation after being up that much? You don't know. It would be nice to know, but you don't know. Let's see what else we have as the day gets underway. You can see here 933. Now we know which one was the number on BJ. We'll get to stocks on the move later. That's just a little bit of a taste test. So if for nothing else, a trader that sees the bullishness in the market and is comfortable hopping on, right? Not necessarily my cup of tea. However, there are plenty of traders that are perfectly comfortable playing the momentum, understanding that they can get a pie in the face. But 939, you see here, staying above 412 keeps the door open for 413.10 or more. Another taste test at 945, we'll circle back to that stuff. Spy reach the next target, should be 413, that's a typo, but everybody gets the point. Should be overhead resistance, or they're going to make a run for 414 and change. Now, pay attention to this, because this is part science, part art form. The better short trade on the board at the moment is above 414. Not sure they'll get there, but that's on my mind. So I'm just preparing if they shoot up to 414 at this point in time, and they haven't got there yet, but at this point in time, I'm thinking there's a trade in there. Now, we'll keep going and you'll see how it unfolds. Not much going on. The longer they hang around, the more energy they're building to travel to the next target above 414. Another taste test, 958 on RL. Now, as you'll see, after 10 o'clock, unless they eat too much time off the clock, I'll take a short trade around 414.25 or higher. It's a reasonable risk reward for a trade, not a marriage. Traders riding the SPY to the long side on the way up would need to book profits at 414 or above 414. That's what the technicals are saying. But let's see how it unfolds. Unless they're back below 413 on candle closes, they're simply grinding their way to 414 and a quarter, give or take. So traders that are long can certainly take the ride. Now, I'm starting to think in terms of morning pivots, quarter to 11, they're grinding higher. It's about that time where you say, hey, they've gone a lot today, they've gone far enough. Now, it's not for me to say or anyone to say what far enough is, it's just what I'm thinking at the time. So the volume is light, the tape is slow, shorting is not easy on a tape like this, trader's choice above 414 and a quarter. So you'll see I go from at 1023 or make it 1004, I'll take a short around 414 and a quarter, but when they get there, it's not the same look. They didn't get there in a hurry, so I'm not as interested. It's not an easy tape. Trader's choice, back as needed. Guess what? Let's see what else we have. Slow grind, trend day higher. They got to the first target with ease at 413 and change. The next one, they've come up short and are just hanging around. They could push slightly higher, but they're into an area where petering out was likely, also known as overhead resistance. The more time they eat off the clock under 414 and a quarter, the more likely it becomes they push higher. If they fall, they can trend down to 413 and so on, give or take. So you can see the short trade is becoming less and less interesting because of how they got there. Not all numbers are created equal. Write that down. By 1108, here's what you got. To answer your questions, yes, technically 414 and a quarter and higher should produce a reaction in the other direction. When considering the tape, it's very slow, and they can just run sideways or continue higher with no sellers present at present. I'm not interested in a short trade over lunchtime. Trader's choice. It's reasonable, but if they begin pushing above 414.60 on candle closes, they're just grinding higher, and you would be best served 
to cut and run. That's for the traders that were interested in being short the market. And I know that there are. Even if I say don't do it, there's going to be a percentage of traders that say he's going to be wrong, heard somebody else say this is the spot, I'm shorting it anyway. Then when the trade is wrong, they come back over the top and blame me. Happens all the time. You have to have thick skin in this business. You're as good as your last trade, even if it wasn't yours. We're moving along. Let's see what else we have. 1216. The next daily chart breakdown candle high comes in at 416. They've just run a test. Getting above and closing candles above is bullish. Normal is not to be able to get through on the first run, which they haven't. Back after lunchtime still. Now from this point forward, you can pause the video, read the notes. The afternoon was rather dull, so there wasn't a lot going on. And this long post here is everything that I pretty much discussed with you already in terms of, and this was an abbreviated version, in terms of what the likely scenario is, kind of the if-then statement. So you can pause it, read the whole thing at your leisure, double-check the work, learn whatever you like to learn from the notes. There is a lot of learnable stuff in there. Now let's see what we've got with stocks on the move. Remember, we always look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. This is an open book, transparent system. Today, we're going to look at RL, KSS, BJ. Even though it says jump target, there were three numbers. It didn't jump the last one, SBLK. The last three on the list we won't look at because they didn't get to my numbers. I'm not interested in trading them at somebody else's numbers. When they don't hit mine, they become no trades. First up, RL. Buzz cut at the open. First number on the board, 121.50. Secondary number, 118.53. They're close together. They're for different reasons. Can make a case either or. Guess what? Two trades out of RL if a trader so chose. The first number worked. Here's the bounce. The high happens to be 123.49. That's the minimum required base hit. It's not a rocket ride. It's a base hit. Base hits put you in the Hall of Fame. What happened next? They come down to the second number. They do what? They go back to the first number and beyond. You could see the importance of these numbers. It was a zone as a result of two numbers close together. The numbers work. When you look at an hourly chart, it's even a little bit more dramatic. So they're falling. They're falling. It's a falling knife, right? No, it's not. They're headed to a destination. Once you gain an understanding of that and you become a believer in that, the entering trade portion has less stress, less anxiety when you understand the numbers work. They're not going to work every time. Some trades are not going to work. Using the 80-20 rule, 80 plus percent of the trades are going to work, but you've got to realize there's another side. That means somewhere around 20% of the time, they're going to lose. That's the way this business works. We're a little bit better than 80% anyway. Kohl's, just a little bit different. Buzz cut at the open, 54.41, 53.51, half at the first, half at the second, your average in. Your stop was an hourly close below 52.54. Now, this is part science, part art form. This is the art form part. Look where the low of day was. 52.50 against 52.54, hourly close below, that was the stop. When you see them run a test of the stop, close the hour, which was the next candle, with a big up candle as compared to the last candle. Now, I realize it's a five-minute chart, but it's in concept. And they close the last candle positive, and they keep going. That was running a test. It should be good to go. It just needs time. Sometimes these trades happen right away. Sometimes they take time. Either way, the numbers work. Well, a trader might say, well, what about the ones that don't work? You keep saying the numbers work. Yeah, those are the ones where my numbers were wrong. How about BJ's wholesale? This one was a little crazy. Let me go over it. So it's getting a haircut at the open. And we had some numbers that were a little bit disparate. They were a little bit different than they normally are. The chart is the chart is the chart. I knew they were going to look a little bit weird to some folks. However, I put the numbers up as they are based on the technicals. 4580, 
45 and a quarter, and then 43.50. A little far apart from first to third. I get that, but could make an equal case. It could have been all three numbers. Either way, all that being said, let's check out what happened. Opening print, 43.51. Last number on the board, 43.50. The rest is history. Now, I also realize that there are plenty of traders that chose not to take that trade, not to put the order in right around the opening bell as it's melting down. I get that. There are also many traders that did put the order in, that did take the rocket ride, and it did pay off. I get that. SBLK, buzz cut at the open, 2054 was the spot. You could see what happened. They spike it through by three cents. Just minutes later, they're running a high of 2097. Doesn't sound like a lot when you first look at it. Doesn't look like a lot on this chart. But when you're talking about a scalp trade, when you're talking about day trades, and you can get 40, 45 cents on a $20 stock in seconds, you take it and run. If they give you more and you want to hold a trailer, fine. This one happened to come back down, and you can see what happened later on. They went back up. But the trade was first thing in the morning. Again, just a different look on a different chart. Looks like a falling knife. Why not this gap? There are reasons there was something else that was more important. Things on bigger charts, bigger time frames, take precedent. They have dominance over the smaller time frame stuff. What about Camp IWM? Quite interesting today. They finished positive up about half a percent, but A, they were negative in the morning. B, they under-participated. Relative strength or relative weakness, in this case, relative weakness, and this is my favorite market leading indicator. Of note, puzzle piece on the table. They squeaked a gain out above the 100 period moving average, that's fine. They filled the gap left open here from the 18th, closed below it, that's fine. If Friday we get a melt up, they're likely gonna take all the markets up together. But what we have to recognize on this chart is the position as it relates to or compared to the SPY. High, lower high, potential lower high in the making, we don't know yet, but that's the look. That's what's going on until or unless they get above the convergence of these moving averages. So nothing's changed from really the last conversation we had about Camp IWM. What about the folks down at the transportation department? So this is interesting also. I would put this as another puzzle piece on the table. Why? Well, they're also below the 20 period moving average, closed above it yesterday. The market's positive today, yet the transports are down and found their way closing below the 20 period moving average. Now, on one hand, it could be a retrace of the tail candle. On the other hand, it's a head scratcher. It's a market leading indicator. My second favorite, my first favorite, canary in the coal mine, it's a puzzle piece, it's on the table. When you look at this 240 chart, and we're just using this for learning purposes, it could be, even though this candle is red, it can throw you off. They made a low, it's a tail, it could be a move off the low, and one of these bullish, flaggish, wedgish kind of things for another move higher. That's certainly possible. You have to be the umpire calling balls and strikes. What takes that off the table? A close below on this 240 chart, a close below the low, 15, 317, 11. Now, on the 120 minute chart, it's a slightly different look. The thing that jumps off the page at me on this chart is really the move down and the bear flag pattern. So even on these similar charts, 120 to 240, I get a different impression on both charts. What happens when you have conflicting information in the same market on two different charts? The first thing you do is you go to the more dominant time frame. You go to the larger time frame. Since I have a conflict between 120 and 240, I could go to the 240 and say, okay, you win, you're the larger time frame, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go up one more. We're gonna go to the daily and we're gonna say, okay, 
well, we see this, we see this low is important, and also this low is important, which is a breakup candle low. So this low, 15,369, this low, 15,317, somewhere in there is support for this market. If they give this stuff up, watch out below. I'm not going to say the daily chart is bullish because they just closed below the 20 period moving average, but I'm not going to say it's bearish until they close below this stuff. So in terms of analyzing, pulling back the covers and peeling back the onion four or five layers, what we would say in the transports is, we're not sure, we need more information. I gave you both layouts and it's a coin toss at present. But we know the scenario. We know if they do this, then this. If they do this, then this. The other side of that is going up north, they'll wanna fill this gap left open from the 18th. Guess what? 15,642.98. It's open, it's not filled, and getting back above here, that's what they would be doing. Doesn't mean the entire thing is bullish, but if they start getting above on hourly closes and then close daily above that gap, then the trend is your friend until she dumps you. Pretty much that simple. Now, what we just did there, we used this chart and the 120 and the 240 chart of the transports to go through a scenario. It didn't matter that this is the transports. It could have been lumber, it could have been soybeans, it could have been pork bellies. All charts act and react the same way. The analysis would have been identical. I proved the point in the course, Lazy E-Mini Trader, by taking the image off the chart, taking the DJT day transportation average, taking this background off the chart taking everything off the chart, doing the analysis, and then at the end of the lesson, you're surprised to see what the actual chart was. And then the takeaway is all charts act and react the same way. What's going on out in Silicon Valley? What's going on with the queues? Well, it looks like they're going to run a test at minimum of this breakdown candle high or fill the gap right here, period, full stop. We'll call it 334. If they do that into the weekend, Friday's close, Friday floater up near, at, or above the breakdown candle high around the gap, turns the trend back up. The trend is your friend until she dumps you. That's what we would have. That sets up a further melt-up operation slash blow-off scenario. The financials basically flat today, just above the 20 period moving average, riding it, the trend is your friend. There's no new information with the financials. We'll just move it along. Smash mouth, the chart looks very similar to the cues. The conversation is identical to the cues. The only difference between smash mouth and the cues, smash mouth is a little bit ahead of the curve. If we have a Friday floater, a bullish thing into the close, don't be surprised to see Smash Mouth finish above its gap. Where's its gap? Figure 243.50 to 244, just in that neighborhood. If we have a uber bullish day, assume they're going to finish above that. That gets everybody in melt-up mode. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're going to pull the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.